everyone, Kelly Noble Mirabella here on behalf of ManyChat. Today I'm going to show you how you can integrate your CRM with ManyChat using a fantastic tool called Zapier. Now you are going to need three things in order to do this project. You are going to need ManyChat Pro in order to utilize things called Zaps. You are going to need a Zapier account and yes you can use a free Zapier account. Just keep in mind there are limits on how much you can do within a free Zapier account and you are going to need to use a CRM that integrates within Zapier. In today's example I'm going to be doing Pipe Drive which is a very popular CRM used among many in the community and across a lot of different industries. But if you're not using Pipedrive, don't sweat it because the steps are actually very similar depending on which CRM you decide to use. Now you might be wondering, why would I need to do this if all these people are inside of ManyChat? I can just, you know, follow up with them there. Well, a CRM, also known as a customer relation management tool, helps you to have a better relationship with your end user, with your audience, with your customers. It will help you to better optimize your marketing strategies. It helps you to better convert leads into customers and get those repeat customers through a follow-up campaign strategy. And it will help you to enhance your customer relations. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into ManyChat so I can show you how to integrate into a CRM, in this case, Pipedrive, with a fantastic tool called Zapier. Let's go do this. So the first thing that we are going to want to do is make sure that our flows are set up correctly. So you're going to want to go over to flows and create a new flow. Generally speaking, when you are integrating ManyChat with a CRM, you're probably going to need some information from your end user. So that's exactly what we're going to ask for here. So we're going to use the user input option and just ask a couple of questions that are necessary to add to our CRM. So let's first ask for their email address. All right, so we've set up our message. Our reply type is going to be email and we are going to get rid of the skip button and we need to make sure that we're saving their email address in a custom field. So create a custom field where you're going to save the email address and select that here. And we're going to wait to perform the action until we get all the information that we need. So then our next question, let's go ahead and ask for their phone number as well. All right, there's our message. The reply type is phone. And we are going to keep the skip button in this case, just in case they don't wish to give us their phone number. We're going to need a custom field for the phone number as well. I don't currently have one, so we're going to create one. And we'll just type in whatever we want to call it and create a new custom field. And this is actually a text. It's not a number. So keep that in mind when it comes to phone numbers. Those are text and click create. Now that we have all the questions that we would want, you might have more, but in this case, we're only going to ask the two questions. We are going to create an action. Now our action is going to take place in our last question here, wherever you want your zap to fire. Your zap is when you're talking to Zapier to send it to your CRM. And in this case, it's going to be during our last question. And we're going to click on perform actions. And we are going to look down the list. Now you might notice something. Uh, there's no Zapier. A lot of people ask this. Well, I don't see it in my list. There's no create a Zap. That's because we actually have to go into Zapier and we have to set it up. So let's move over to Zapier and we will be back here in a minute. Now we're in Zapier. We're going to search the two apps that we're going to use. So we're going to use ManyChat and we are going to use Pipedrive. And what do we want it to do? Well, when we trigger a zap, we want to find or create a person. So that's what we're going to do right here. And we're going to go ahead and say use zap. Now, the first step that we're going to have here is we have to connect our ManyChat account. So that's where we click this button, connect account. We're going to find our account that we want to use. If you have a couple connected, this could take a minute to look for, but there it is. And once you're connected, you can close this window and let's go ahead and click test. Great. We're all set. We're going to click on our account here and we are going to save and continue. Now we can go back to our flow and refresh our permissions. 
to make sure that that connection comes through. All right, let's go back to our bot and click on the action. And now you can see it right there, trigger a zap. So we're gonna trigger a zap. We have to name our zap. All right, so that's the name of our zap that we'll reference when we go over to Zapier. Great. Now you certainly will want to preview this and test it, but once you're ready to go, make sure you publish this before you go back to Zapier to set everything up. So let's go ahead and publish. Great, now we're gonna go back to Zapier and we are going to create an event. And our event is actually going to be the zap, the pipe drive zap that we just created. It's gonna show up right there on the list and continue. Now they're talking to each other and it created basically a sample size that we can use when we're creating our zap. So now we need to choose our next app, which is our pipe drive app. So the first thing you wanna do is find the person. If Zapier cannot find this individual within pipe drive, then it will create a new person. This way you don't double up on users. So let's go ahead and continue. And you can test your connection to pipe drive. At this point, I already set this up, but I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step on what you'll need. So the first step is it's asking, what would you want the name to be? So the name is referring to the item within pipe drive. In this box, I am pulling the many chat information. So I'm pulling the step one. So if you click on the plus here, you can either do the first name, the last name. I went ahead with the user's name, full name. So that's what I've got there. And then you want to create, create pipe drive person if it doesn't exist yet. That You definitely want to create that because if ManyChat and pipe drive are not matching up and they're not able to find that person in pipe drive, you want to make sure that you create that person's profile. So we want to make sure we click on create pipe drive person if it doesn't exist. And we're going to just go through and basically fill out the information here. So the name is the name just like before, and that's the user's name, which we already have here. And the owner is the pipe drive owner. So that's who I've collected there. But if you have several people within pipe drive that you want to manage certain things and you want only one individual to manage your many chat leads, for instance, or leads from the specific flow, then you can assign that here. It's just me in pipe drive. So I selected myself. And then you want to cross-reference your data. So in Pipedrive, the email, what is it pulling from ManyChat? So I went ahead and clicked on the email address. If you just scroll down here, the custom user field email, I clicked on that. And then I also, as you remember, I did have a question where I was asking for their phone number. And although it was optional, if they do give that to me, I wanna be able to bring that over. So again, you go in and you look for the custom field for phone number in this case, which is this one right here, which I already had. And it says no data. And that's only because there's no phone number in ManyChat for me personally, which is the user we're bringing up. But if I were to fill out this profile and fill out this flow and confirm my phone number, then that would be brought over as well. And then this is just an optional who you want it to be visible to within Pipedrive. So let's go ahead and click on continue and you can run a test here. I already ran a test. It was successful. I'm going to click finish and then I'm going to turn this zap on. All right, cool. So let's go check out and see if this actually works. So I have my flow here. I'm going to confirm my email address. I'm gonna confirm my phone number, and then we're gonna go and see if our zap went through. So if you actually go to your task history, it's actually gonna show you if your zap went through. And look, there was a zap that went through, it was successful. All right, so we're gonna go back into Pipedrive. We're gonna click on contacts and people, and there it is, Kelly Noble Mirabella. There's my email, here's my phone number, and I am the owner of this, so it worked out beautifully.